Hello, my name is Dr. Shara Lentz. Today I'd like to talk to you about a chapter that I wrote for the Refractive Thinker, a doctoral anthology series that is now in its fourth volume. For volume one, I wrote a chapter entitled Fail Faster, Succeed Sooner, Chapter 10. That'll be the focus of our discussion today. The idea of failure really strikes fear in the heart of most people. So we want to talk about it a little bit today so we can look at what it is, how do we define it, and how are we defined by it. Let's first discover its function. I'm going to introduce you to someone I call Peter the Plumber. If we look at the concept of why someone hires a plumber, we, want, we might think that we hire Peter to fix our sink. It seems to be a plausible assumption. Let's instead look at the idea through the outcome-based thinking approach. We are willing to exchange money to fix our problem that provides a solution or an outcome. However, is this really what we're paying Peter to fix? Are we really paying to fix, have Peter come into our home for the 10 to 15 minutes to be able to fix our crisis? Not quite. What we are paying Peter for is Peter's previous failures. We're really paying for Peter's experience. He wants to be able to fix our plumbing crisis this way, the first time, the right way. So we want to be able to look at the idea of how Peter fails faster so he can succeed sooner. We're not really paying for Peter's 15 or 30 minutes in our home. Instead, we are paying for him for his previous education and how not to fix our plumbing problem. Because the quicker he failed, the learning aspect, the faster he succeeded, the more customers he can help. So if we look at this through the eyes of what's called the learning organization, a continuous learning process. Let's look at the post-it note stories for the 3M Corporation. Initially, the glue that holds post-it notes together was a complete failure. Instead, somebody had to look at that idea that 3M databases, all of its success stories, all of its failures, without judgment, and all it took was somebody else to look at this through different eyes, a different perspective. Someone just had to look at failure in a different way to help see what was already there. The idea, we may call it failure, but they call it stuff that hasn't succeeded yet. Now look at the idea of what it takes to be efficient, effective, and exceptional. There is success in failure. Failure is not something many in society embrace, let alone befriend. For many, including myself, Failure was not an option, just like the famous line from Apollo 13. For we type A plus personalities, this is quite common for us to be able to be very perfectionistic, very, um, the ability to only see one side of the equation. This failure simply isn't in our vocabularies. This is the rare F word that most people even refuse to spell. Now spell it with me today, F-A-I-L-U-R-E, failure. Recovering perfectionist, we just have to be realistic. Perfection is just not attainable while we're human. Failure is a process. Think of failure as a milestone, a goalpost, a sign that we're in the hunt, hot on the trail. Insert your favorite cliche here. The idea of failure is that we haven't succeeded yet. Another Y-E-T. Spell it with me. I know you can. Seriously, the fascination with failure and the word yet. Yep, they said it again. What is this so curious about the word failure exactly that really just has some people just screwed into the ceiling that we have to be able to take them off to be able to learn, to be able to find value in what they have accomplished? So why do we hate failure so much? Part of it is fear. We think that failure makes us vulnerable. Failure makes us weak. But is this really so bad? The idea of failure it's just something that we have to put in context. They can't take away our birthday. There's no such thing as the failure police. What could really happen that would be so bad other than our perceptions and what we have placed on the burden of failure? Let's look at that little three little word quite yet. Y-E-T. The concept of yet is very important to the idea of failure. Failure is simply something that we haven't yet succeeded. It's not that we're not in the hunt, and it's not that we're not trying. It's just we're not there yet. Failure's valuable. Failure teaches us something. Let's cheer for failure. Let's bring it on as our friend. The more that you can tell people about your relationship with failure, the more successful you can be. 
Hi, I'm Dr. Cheryl. I'm Dr. Cheryl. I have failed. I am probably part of the first ever Failures Anonymous. We have our own 12-step program, and the first step is to be able to admit that sometimes you fail, but that's part of the equation for success, is you can't have one without the other. Failure is simply success that hasn't happened yet. Failure can debilitate. Failure can stop people. I have many failures to point to, from academic achievements that didn't quite go right the first time, medical issues I've had to deal with time and time again. However, the good news is I'm still here. The only failure that is really failure is something that stops us completely. Just one thing. Failure's a gift. Failure's a teacher. Failure has done its job well if we stop instead of going on and we learn from what we've done so that we can apply it to the next situation. Remember our friend Edison with the light bulb? 998 ways on how not to build a light bulb. Can you imagine what he would have looked like and what our lives would have looked like if he would have stopped, say, at failure number four? The idea is not to think failure is permanent. It's just having a real conversation with failure. And yes, I do talk to failure and I talk to what's often and I look at the many valuable lessons that it has to offer me to be able to look at what I may not have done right this time, but what I can look better to do next time. When I had my first book come out, The Golden Palace Theory of Management, I have a character called Merlin. He's from the village of calm and clarity. Merlin offers a wonderful story with regard to the concept of money, in words that I call judgment words. Money, failure, all those types of things, they're really not what they appear to be until we allow them and we give them context and we define them. Just like failure here, failure is not a bad thing unless we allow it to be. So if we talk to failure and we look that failure is not an option may not be the best perspective to have. Instead, we might look to our friend Winston Churchill and his famous speech at the Harrow School in 1941. Never give in. Never, never, never give in. And nothing great or small, larger or petty, never give in except to convictions of honor and good sense. The challenge is, is failure is only failure if we let it stop us. Failure eventually turns into success if we allow it to lead us. So if we speak in absolutes where failure is not an option, we limit the growth that we can offer. But failure is a friend? Really? Friends and I discuss failure at happy hour and we offer the following conclusion. You ready? Failure cannot hurt you unless you let it. Whew, pretty heavy stuff. Let's take a minute here if you need to. Now let's return to our friend Peter the, Plum Peter the Plumber. Was Peter successful his first time? The second time? Is it realistic to believe that Peter was perfect the very first time he tried to apply what he learned to fix the sink to fix any problem? No. No different than we learned how to walk the very first time. We stopped. We dusted ourselves off, we got back up, and we did it again. Failure was a game when we were a child, and somehow we've lost that as, a, as an adult. So what a child learns, eventually we learn fear, and unfortunately that's what the adult in us retains. So what we're looking for is the idea of failure as a concept that's the way we've learned. Good luck to you. I hope to hear you.